Hello there. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly, and today I'm going to complete a two-page layout using our brand new Playful and Fun Winter Gnomes collection. Some of you are familiar with our Gnomes for All Seasons Autumn, and now we're moving into a different season, ready or not, here comes winter. So you can see in this collection on our 12 by 12 sticker sheet that there are two gnome-specific stickers, and the rest are just a beautiful winter collection. I love the stickers in this set and I love the color combinations. The recommended colors for this collection are jade, peach, periwinkle, pine, mist, sapphire, and espresso, also white daisy. So in the workshop kit you get two each of the coordinating colors plus an additional nine sheets of white to be able to create the workshop that has three two-page layouts and a single page. So you can see we have this great word paper. Of course, we always have an awesome stripe. And then you see the gnome specific hero paper and the winter specific hero paper. It feels like the gnomes lend themselves a little bit more to the browns and greens and the winter specific is a little bit more to toward the blues and the periwinkle. And then we have a distressed snowflake and a great crisscross that is super versatile. So Here's that coordinating cardstock, and here's a few of the great zip strips that I've actually already cut off. I get kick myself. I'm always like, show the paper first before you cut it, but I get so excited. All right, so here you see the coordinating cardstock to espresso, to sapphire, to mist, to periwinkle, to pine, to white daisy, and then again in the scrapbooking workshop kit, you get an additional nine sheets of white daisy. So we have the gnomes for winter thin cut here and it is an a cute and funny skater gnome. So you see all the different pieces to create him with his mustache and his beard. We also have gnomes for winter scrapbooking stamp and thin cut. So we have a sled and trees and snowflake flakes and sentiments and mittens and all things winter. So of course as the guest designer for this workshop I I received a prototype so it looks a little bit different it doesn't have that great picture that comes with our stamp sets but you can see there's some great large titles as well as lots of other great stamps in that stamp set and some white acrylic shapes so of course you can download this free guide you um, can follow the link here in the description to the shop site and underneath the purchase button of the workshop you will find the full workshop guide so you can print that out or you can watch that uh, look at that on a device and it gives you all the cutting guides and measurements for the thin cuts all of the stamping instructions full color photos to be able to put the workshop together easily with all the thinking done for you so I have decided to use this workshop on the busy winter side I've created a couple frames and I wanted to use it for Hattie Elaine one of our granddaughters first birthday party Party. So here she is, and she is one of our only grands out of eight grandchildren that has a winter birthday. And so she had a winter wonderland birthday for her first birthday. And of course, um, after the party, it was a fun day of sledding. So I'm going to use those photos. We're going to start out with two 12 by 12 frames. The first one, we're going to cut from 1 to 11 all the way around and create a gutted frame. The second one is a little different. We're going to cut three inches all the way around from three to nine all the way around leaving a little square left over. I wanted to conserve every single piece of this pattern paper because as a guest designer I wasn't allowed to add any extras. So I wanted every last bit. Then we have two white daisy 11 by 11 sheets and then we have this great crisscross here that is six by 10 and two by eight. So we're gonna use the six by 10 on the left side and the two by eight on the right side. And we're going to add a couple pieces of the zip strip. We have, of course, our zip strips are always a half inch. So a half by 10 and a half and a half by six and a half. And so we're going to be using those and we're going to do some treatments on these um, 11 by 11 pieces using sponging. So I'm going to use one sponge, cut it 
in fourths, fourths so that we have one sponge for each color. On this particular layout, which is the first layout in a series of four, we're going to sponge with some sapphire ink on the background. Now, you could do this with a blending brush. You could do this in any number of ways, but because I am limited to a certain amount of supplies as a guest designer, if I'm using a sponge anyway, I'm going to use a sponge throughout the entire workshop. But just know that if you prefer blending brushes or other things, those would work just fine as well. So I'm just sponging a little bit of that sapphire ink in the upper right corner, and then I'm going to um, sponge some on the lower left, not all the way down, but sort of the left uh, lower middle. And we're gonna just kind of give that a nice little textured background with that sapphire sponge. And then we're going to come in on this 11 inch piece. And I'm just showing you on my Versa mat that we are going to come four inches in from the right and do a little sponging on that whole four inch piece on the right side. We're going to be cutting some of that off and doing some contour cutting where we're cutting around some bits that we're going to mount on the right side of the page, specifically those cute little gnomes. So we don't have to completely go to the right hand side all the way, but I just go ahead and do and I, I fill in with the sponging all the way. And you can add more sponging in different parts. There are some parts of this layout that are going to show um, in different spots, but I'm just actually adding that as a little texture in the background and it's going to be great. Much of it is going to be covered. We're going to add some more treatments to that, but it's going to be just enough to add that nice little blue texture in the background and make you feel like winter. Now you can use any number of snowflakes. We have some little snowflakes, some medium snowflakes, and some larger snowflakes. I decide to use the large and the medium snowflakes and we're going to do some second generation stamping in sapphire ink and we're going to just add a little bit more interest in the sponged background. Not all of it is going to show so we're going to be closer toward the inside on this right page, the inside of the sponging so more toward the center there but we'll go kind of back and forth and I'm going to do one stamp all the way through and then grab the other stamp all the way through. So for second generation, you're going to press it into the ink, press it off on scrap paper, and then press it on to the background. Now I'm going to come back in with the smaller snowflake stamp. Actually, it's the medium size when you compare it to the other size in the uh, Winter Gnome scrapbooking stamp and thin cut. It's a little hard to see on camera, but it makes such a beautiful combination and a beautiful background. We're gonna do the same thing here on the left side. We're going to do some of that second generation stamping again on the upper right and then in the lower to middle left. And I hope that you'll be able to see how beautiful and soft this is in the background. Now, there's so many more things that you could add to this workshop. And something that you learn when you are guest designing for, um, for in this case, for Close to My Heart, you get a set um, supply list and you sometimes have some say into what you add and um, uh, what some little extras that you can do and sometimes not because it's the responsibility of the company then to be able to kit up this product and to be able to offer this product. So it's not an unlimited supply. Not everyone has the same stash. So we have to be a little bit conscious of that. So I'm actually put aside the base pages and we're going to work on the gnomes. So the gnomes is really, even though it's not hard, it's going to be a little bit more of the heavy lifting. Most of the work of this layout is going to be layering those gnomes. And this particular layout focuses on layering die cuts to make really playful and fun, um, interesting elements for your scrapbooking pages. So I'm showing you all the different bits. You have the base, which is in white daisy. And for this particular layout, we need four 
Silver White Daisy base, uh, base ice skating gnomes. And then we're going to have some beards. We need four White Daisy beards. We need four of the Sapphire skates and four Periwinkle skates. Now the skates are two different sizes. The left and the right size are not exactly identical. We're going to need um, eight noses as an option. So four for the actual noses. And then I'm going to rub four of those in the ballerina ink to make the mouth so that behind the mouth, you will be able to see a little splash of pink behind the mouth because we're going to add pattern paper hats and things behind that mouth. And then I want that to look pink. And then you'll also have the beard and the hat section. Some of those can stay the same color but we're going to have two of those in sapphire, two of those in periwinkle, and then we're going to have some hat pieces that in the cut guide, all of this is spelled out completely, that you only have to cut parts of that um, gnome body because parts of them are going to be covered up by the beard. So we're going to need a horizontal striped hat, a crisscross hat, a distressed snowflake hat, and the other one is just going to stay sapphire. So that one's really easy. And then of course we're going to have four mustaches. Now in the Gnomes for Autumn stamp and thin cut set there's this great mitten. Even though the mitten isn't part of the actual standalone gnome thin cut I thought those mittens would look perfect we're going to leave a couple of the hands showing and we're going to do some ballerina treatments on those hands to make them look like rosy hands you can also make them any skin tone that you want depending on the skin tone of your gnome that you want him to be but I've done a couple of those mittens now there's only one mitten so to have the thumbs going in the right direction you'll cut one on the right side of the paper and one on the back side of the paper and then flip it over so that the thumbs are going in the right direction. And again, all of this is completely spelled out in the instruction guide that again is a free download and I have linked that in the description. So now I'm simply adding a little bit of ballerina ink with the ballerina sp uh, uh, sponge, the section of the sponge that's ballerina, adding it to the noses and to the bits that are going to be behind the mouth. Then I'm going to actually cut off the sapphire and periwinkle skates on the bottom. And I actually don't cut off enough. You really need to cut it to the base of the skate, the bottom of the skate, because it's going to be a different color. We're going to layer that on top of the base of the gnome and do a little bit of treatments on the skate to make them look a little bit more metallic and shiny. Right now I'm taking a piece of scrap paper and I'm adding ballerina ink to it because we're going to make the pom-pom on the hat. And so this is totally optional. He doesn't have to have a pom-pom, but I'm just free cutting little round fluffy shapes out of the white daisy. And I think on this particular layout, I leave two of them white and two of them are going to be the ballerina. So I'm cutting the white off of the edge that doesn't have any ballerina ink and then I'm cutting a couple out of the ballerina. I'm going to use more off of this piece because there's more gnomes throughout the workshop. What I like to do is create all my die cut pieces, create all the gnomes that I'm going to need for the whole workshop, which is going to be seven pages altogether. Two of the layouts are going to be using the standalone gnomes, and then two of the layouts are just going to be winter themed to show the versatility in this collection. If you are a gnome lover, you can add gnomes to every single layout if you want to. If you're not a fan of gnomes, you can completely go in the direction of winter only and use the gnomes for autumn stamp and thin or gnomes for winter stamp and thin cut that is just specifically winter themed. So now I'm going to show you what I did for treatments on the skates, but I love our metallic spectrum noir markers that were in our last core catalog. Many of my paper crafters purchased that because we used that when we did projects out of the last catalog. So I like to be able to show them ways to still use things that they've invested in previously, even though we no longer carry the metallic markers in our new current catalog that launched last month. 
So I am actually not using it in the master workshop. I'm actually adding a little bit of mink ink and a little bit of clear shimmer brush and I'm adding those to the bottom of the skate blades only. And it adds a little bit of a grayish silvery um, tint to the bottom of the skates to make it look like the skate blade. But I also love the idea if you happen to already have the Spectrum Noir um, metallic marker and I'm actually using the smallest I think it's 0.7 mm or 0.7 millimeter the one with the very fine tip you could probably go uh, one up from that the markers that we carried at close to my heart we had four different sizes I believe and so like I said a lot of my paper crafters invent invested in that so I'm showing them additional options the the master workshop uses the mink uh, ink and the combination of pooling together the mink ink and the clear shimmer brush and then I wanted to show the difference of that and the metallic marker both wonderful options now you could also use gloss spray throughout this I was not able to add gloss spray to this workshop because we no longer carry the white gloss spray but it would be super cute on the pom-poms that would be a great effect as well as in lots of other areas in this workshop the gloss spray would look really really cute now keep in mind that one of the skates is a little bit larger than the other skate so when you're cutting those there is a left and a right skate and I'm just going to be quick about it and I'm going to add glue to all the feet of the gnomes the the boot area of the gnomes and then I'm just going to add those skates really quickly it's going to look like there's going to be a little bit of a gap in his legs but they're actually one won't be once we add that beard piece. So back to the white gloss spray, I just wanted to show my paper crafters that there are lots of other things that you could add to the workshop, but we're limited to just adding endless um, supplies to our workshops. When you are a guest designer, you get a set of things that you can use, but if you have that in your stash, I love to show you ways how to use up things that we've invested in in the past. Also, the other one that would be easy and wonderful and fun would be um, our diamond white stickles which we also used to carry and so if you have diamond white stickles if you have white gloss spray if you have um, the metallic markers those would be great additions to this workshop Okay, now we're going to add mittens to just a couple of those gnomes. A couple of those are going to be, their hands are going to be out and they're going to be rubbed with the ballerina ink. And a couple of those, I'm going to add those cute little mittens that I thought was just such a cute little touch. So now we can add the base of the gnomes on top and then we'll be adding the hats on top of that. So we're going to add the crisscross to the periwinkle, the distress snow, to um, the periwinkle, a stripe to a striped hat to the sapphire uh, shirt gnome and then one of the gnomes is sapphire all the way from head to toe and so what I'm doing here is I'm showing you that the beard covers up a certain section um, of the hat but we want the hat to come down low enough to connect with the beard section but not too low to cover up the sleeves of the shirt now later on in the workshop we'll be adding some pattern paper shirts to the gnomes by paper piecing and I just wanted to show a variety where you could have the gnomes all one color no fuss no muss you don't need to paper piece hats or paper piece shirts but if you want to have different color hats and different color shirts you can cut different sections of that gnome you don't need to leave him whole you can cut him in sections and add a variety of colors and patterns to him now for my beards and and my mustaches I added a little bit of really light sponging with mink ink and then I'm going to be coming over the whole thing with shimmer brush and that was to make him look like kind of like a little speckly whitish grayish beard now some people like stark white beards on their gnomes so you can simply add shimmer brush directly to the beards and mustaches and add no um, mink 
and don't make it gray. You can make it a darker gray if you want it to be a darker gray. Some other really fun ideas. You could add stickles to the beard again, diamond white stickles. You could add gloss spray to the beard. You could add white daisy ink instead of mink ink and make it a really stark white beard. There's so many ways you can go with him. I just opt opted to have a little bit of a tint of gray in there with the mink. So it's barely noticeable, but it does make it look a little roughed up, like a little bit more of a coarser hair, like the gnome hair is so coarse, typically our gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking from experience, I have a few of them sprouting out now and again. They're very coarse. Um, and then you have him all together. And I'm showing you here again. Go ahead and play. Have fun. You could use white daisy ink. You could use just shimmer brush, just clear shimmer brush, white stickles or uh, white gloss spray. Now, I do decide to go ahead and add some speckles of white gloss spray on top of the treatments that I already put on the 11 by 11 pieces. You do not have to, and it is not in the workshop. This is just an add added extra that I thought would be a fun texture for the background and I already have it and I'm on a mission to continually bring back in things that I've already purchased and get good use out of my investments okay so just if it if you have it and you want to add it add away if you like that look I just thought it would be fun to have some speckled snow in the background and our white gloss spray is so, so perfect for that. It's so pretty. It's hard to see that detail on camera and it's definitely hard to see in photos. The photos never seem to do it justice. Uh, even the best of photos, it's hard to see all the shimmery um, and glossy details, all the texture that we've added to this and all the fun little design elements. So now's when we get to be playful and fun. In my opinion, gnomes are playful. So I'm going to toggle the gnomes like they're slipping and sliding off of the page. Some of them going forward and some of them going backward and making it so that the skate sticks out and you can see the skate. So the top one, you can see the right skate, the bottom one, you can see the left skate, uh, the middle one. And then on the bottom one, you can see both skates. I'm going to adhere those in place and we're going to do some contour cutting because we want it to seem like they're floating or sliding off of the page. So fun. I love the idea of just coming in underneath with your micro tip scissors. Now our micro tip scissors are great because they're non-stick. So slide them and toggle them. They're so short you can toggle them under your pieces so you're not accidentally cutting your gnomes that you work so hard at. You're toggling, toggling them between your gnomes and the background page and you're just making a fun contour cut. You're going to cut that so that they look like they're slip sliding, playing, falling. I can almost hear them say whoa 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 <laughs> that would be me on ice skates sliding around like those cute little gnomes I love these types of things that can go gorgeous and beautiful and so you know how sometimes winter and frost can be so beautiful but then I also love those ones that bring out the inner child and make you feel so playful I love that in my layouts I love to scrap beautiful things I love to scrap functional I love to scrap um, playful and fun um, things that can just kind of bring out your inner child and make you smile. So now we're going to do a little bit of mounting. I'm not going to mount the white daisy pieces yet. I'm just pulling that over to the left of my Versa mat so that you can see the spacing. It's going to be about one and an eighth inch with the zip strip. So I'm going to place the crisscross piece at about one and a fourth inches from the left side of the white daisy. And then on the transition, a little bit over on the crisscross and a little bit over onto the white 
I'm going to center that zip strip so there's just a little bit of that zip strip hanging up at the top and the bottom of the crisscross piece. I'm going to actually work on the white daisy piece because I personally want to pop up that whole piece with foam tape. If you are not a popping up with foam tape girl, you just go ahead and leave it flush, but I'm working on it separate so that when I get it all together, then I will add it with foam tape. So I have my top four by six photo pretty close to the edge and hanging over the top of the crisscross paper. Then I want the right hand uh, photo of Avery Jean sledding just a little bit lower um, on the right flesh, almost flesh, and then the three by three photo tucked underneath and then the three by four photo just like a puzzle tucked in there. Now we're going to add this gnome to the left hand side and I want to toggle his skate strategically to be over the photos to add that element of fun but not covering the subjects of the photos or the cuteness of the photos and I really love to do that where all of the pieces are just overlapping into kind of a pile of fun. I like where just little bits of each thing overlaps and pulls that all together. So now because this piece is going to be put on it with foam tape, I had to add a white daisy piece. If yours is going to be flush, you don't have to have a white daisy piece behind that frame. You can simply adhere it with your liquid adhesive right to the frame. There's plenty of space. I did want to show you the differences in using the gnome side and using the winter side. You're probably thinking, why didn't you use the busy gnome paper as the frame instead of the busy winter as the frame since I'm using the big gnomes? Um, one of the reasons is the winter side lent itself to my photos better. The purpley, the blue, and then the gnome side has a little bit more green tone to it. So depending on your photos, if you don't have pink in your photos like I do, you can totally go in the opposite direction and flip that frame around. Now you can see that I did a little bit of measuring. I want the contour side of those gnomes to butt right up to the right like they're coming off, but I want the um, the left and the right pages to still start at the half inch. So that white daisy to start at the half inch. Um, your page might be different than my page, but I trimmed it just enough so that I can mount that at the half inch part over the frame. Now you don't have to add white daisy to the right side frame because there's plenty of coverage there even with the foam tape. You can kind of go around it. Um, I typically did um, do and did add white daisy because I'll want foam in the center but there would be enough I think of a good structure there to do it without and if you're going directly on the page of course you don't need the white daisy at all. So now we're going to tuck the crisscross piece underneath the gnome just a little bit. We're going to add a transition there with the zip strip and then we're going to work on that page as well and add the photos so that I am able to pop the whole thing up with foam tape. Again, if you're not a foam tape person, you can um, add that, adhere that flush. So I'm just going to toggle this photo so it's under a few of the gnome bits, like the little arm, like the hand, the skate, um, I'm going to toggle that under just a little bit and it's going to have just a little bit of space underneath that zip strip and then I'm going to add the remaining two photos underneath so that um, so that the sledding photo is a little over to the left and then the cardboard box sledding is going to be um, under the gnome. So we used, uh, kind of reminds me of growing up, you know, when growing up as a child, we used um, garbage bags, we used tarps, we used boxes, we used um, Wonder Bread bags. We actually put Wonder Bread bags on our feet, over our boots, and slid on them. I know, I'm dating myself. But um, I love that there were so many kids at the party, and they, all the sleds were used, and she put... 
um, Hattie Elaine in the cardboard box. My daughter Emily did and gave her a ride in the cardboard box. I love it. So now we have the bases assembled and we're going to embellish. We're going to add some stickers. So we have two larger stickers here that I'm going to add one to the left page as the title and one to the right page. And then we have some white acrylic shapes that we're going to add. And then we're going to make a little bit of playful fun with the true blue marker. So we haven't used the tri-blend markers that are on the supply list yet um, because a lot of the markering is going to be on the Gnomes for Winter scrapbooking stamp and thin cut set because there's a little bit of coloring, not a lot, really easy coloring, but we're going to be using, I, I believe there's four tri-blend markers that are on the list, which you can use any markers that lend themselves to your photos. Um, but there's four on the list and I figured you needed it for the supply list. Not Why not try and find a way to incorporate it into the layout that doesn't actually have the coloring. So we're going to do a little bit with that. But right now I used my anti-static pouch to take the adhesive off the stickers so that I could add foam tape so that it would be nice and even. So I added foam tape. I did my journaling on my... Um, uh, stickers, my journaling strip stickers, which I love. They're a go-to for me. And I got, I got them stuck together somehow bumbling around. So I'm just kind of getting them unstuck and I'm going to snip. I actually placed my stickers in place before I did my journaling. So I knew exactly the amount of space I had for journaling because I can cut the strips anywhere. So that way I'm not stuck with like too long of journaling or I, you know, can't get it fit in or I'm in trouble. I did want to show you on the guide how each sticker is labeled as to what layout each sticker goes to. And I did that because my poor old eyes, even though, even if the photos are good, sometimes you can't see the fine detail. So I did list out where the stickers go to make it easier if they're small stickers. Now this layout happens to only have a couple large stickers but now I'm just adding a little bit of my liquid Tombow in different spots and adding some of those cute acrylic snowflakes. Again, not going to show up so great on camera, but the detail in person is so awesome. I love the texture. It has the sponging. It has second generation stamping. It has a little bit of gloss spray splatter. It has, it's going to have the tri-blend markering that we're going to add, the medium true blue, and we're just going to add some dots there. And then it also has, what else did I say? So we have our second generation stamping. We have our sponging. We have some of our shimmer brush. We have the acrylic shapes as texture. So, so fun. It just adds so much detail that are, is just not able to be seen on a photo that adds that wonderful element and not so time consuming, just little tiny details here and there that you can add and it makes for a fun, fun day. So Hattie Elaine's Winter One Durland for her first birthday was a great day had by all Avery Jean, Hattie Elaine, and all their cousins um, playing and friends playing at Hattie Elaine's Hattie Elaine's one first birthday party. I love it. I had so much fun with this. If you've had fun with this, hit subscribe, like, share, follow. I'd love to hear from you and stay tuned for layout number two in this four-part series, Gnomes for Winter. I'll link in the description all of the product details that you need to be able to take a peek as well as the free downloadable instructions um, to take a peek at this workshop and I hope you love it and that you'll have fun recreating this with me. Happy scrapping everyone and happy winter and I hope you love the gnomes. Have a good one everyone. Bye-bye.